Thank you. Carry on. See that. All right, people. Welcome to the Force Commander's Reconnaissance Briefing. My name is Major Gordon, United States Marine Corps, 3rd Battalion, 6th Marines, 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. We have arrived to the area of operations of Malden, and tomorrow morning, you guys will head up out there, and you will carry out some reconnaissance missions for me. Open the PDF I sent you about the reconnaissance briefing, the Force Commander's reconnaissance briefing, and uh, open your page number two. Here you can see the general location of Malden. We're on the I Ionian Sea, right near Greece, and the operational and territorial waters of Greece. The area itself, geographically on page three, you can see that uh, there are the geographical coordinates and also some basic information. I'm not going to read that to you, you can read it all yourself out there. But uh, some basic facts before we head to the operational orders. The island country of Malden is about the size of uh, New York City's Manhattan. But it's not too big. It's a quite compact little island on the Ionian Sea. And it's currently led by a tyrant, oppressor of the people, called Emperor Astor II. The United States Marine Corps is here to kick that motherfucker's ass and bring, bring some justice and democracy to this poor country. We are here to liberate, not kill, the local people. Of course, if the Malden army gives us any trouble, then we are or by all means clear to kill them. We already have the United Nations mandate and the presidential order from President Trump to carry out this mission. Oh, about that legal bullshit, leave it to me. On page four, you can uh, read about the people and politics uh, of the Malden people. The majority of these people are French and British origin, so you can expect that uh, locals know what you're speaking if you're speaking English to them. Because the official language is, uh, in addition to the Maldini Maldonesian French, is also English language. So the enemy knows what we're talking, and if they, by any means necessary, uh, get the chance to listen to our radios, then they will know what we are planning. So try to stick to your call sign radio names in the radio traffic, and uh, try not to reveal too much information. That's why we have our code words. Oh. Let's take a short look at the uh, slotting for, for the uh, preliminary recognitions. Uh, you can see there uh, it's, uh, it's um, names of the teams. Uh, Marine Force Recon Team, you have been designated as Defiant. That is your radio call sign. So Defiant 1 or Defiant Actual, uh, um, First Sergeant Tema, that's your, your call sign. Navy SEALs, your call sign is Trident. So, team leader, Trident 1 or Trident Actual. And then the helicopter logistics combat element is called Nevada. Nevada 1. My call sign is Texas. Texas 6 or Texas Actual to be exact. So, try to memorize those names. If you have your paper pad and your pencils, then you should probably write it down for you makes your life a lot easier when you know who you're calling in the radio. Oh, where was I? Yes, the official languages. So religion is quite an important part for the people of Malden. They are mostly Christians, Catholics and Orthodox, but uh, Emperor Aster II has his own cult, his own religion, or so he claims. Uh, the people of Malden have been taught that uh, the emperor is their god, so the fear towards their so-called god 
in exclamation marks they uh they they don't they 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 don't really want to talk about religion but uh the central intelligence agency cia has uh, gathered as much that uh most of the people out there are christians but uh, they're part of the astorian christian order and in this order this religion these people are taught to be obedient they're taught to be um, willing to die for their emperor so this is kind of like uh, going against some uh, jihadi hajis uh, in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq because these guys are devoted make no mistake they might have bad weapons or or bad equipment or vehicles but uh, they are still willing to die for their emperor. Maybe not all of them, of course, but uh, most of them are, and the ones who aren't, well, they're not going to show it next to their comrades that uh, they don't want to die for their emperor. So these, these guys are fierce enemy, these guys are uh, skilled, and uh, they know, they know how, to, how to play a war game. So be careful out there. As I said, that the uh, tyrant and the current emperor um, is the uh, sovereign leader of Malden. Uh, there are no political parties. There are actually no politics allowed on the island except for Astor's politics. So Emperor Astor's political bloc is the only allowed and official political party in Malden. You won't find any Democrats or Republicans out there like you would uh, back in the States. All right, let's take a peek at the area of operations for recon. Next page. Here you can see the uh, map picture showing the uh, SATCOM uh, satellite image from the northern part, the northern uh, desert, and the northern coast. They have designated there two beaches suitable for United States Marines uh, battalion landing team landing site. If we're going to do this invasion, then these two beaches are the uh, locations from which we could implement this, uh, this landing operation. Beaches are uh, number one, Oregon Beach, and number two, Main Beach. Now, as you can see, there are quite a lot of question marks, those red question marks on the northern side, on the, on the, uh, the coastline and the desert. We have no idea what the Malden army has in these locations. So it will be up to you to find out what they have there. If you read my uh, previous reports about the SATCOM intelligence and the signal intelligence, then uh, you will probably know that uh, um, our intelligence officers uh, picked quite a lot of uh, locations and um, interesting points uh, possible enemy uh, uh, emplacements and uh, units, vehicles, infantry, etc., etc., from from the um, uh, the SATCOM maps. Example: We know that uh, they have positioned almost a full a motorized infantry regiment to the north side of the Malden Island. So we will be facing almost 500 enemy combatants, soldiers and uh, there will be more. So these 500 men will, uh, will only be the tip of the iceberg out there. When you go out uh, in your recon mission then don't want to incite a fight between the recon forces and the local forces because they outnumber us 5 to 10 at least for now. And most of the battalion landing team is uh, is inside the carrier during the transit over the Ionian Sea so we can only spare two teams to operate on the northern side and these two teams are your teams the force recon and the Navy SEALs try to avoid contact when you go there the targets on the map are marked uh, from number one to number four They're the airport or the air base on the northeastern side of the island it's uh, sort of like uh, a designated airbase for the Malden Air Force. 
and also the only international airport on the island. The other airport would be on the northwest side. It's the, uh, the island of Moray, but uh, we don't have to worry about that. They don't have any military assets out there. And in any case, uh, during the invasion, the Marine Battalion landing team will take care of the main island, and the Force Recon Platoon will take out the island of Moray. We'll come to that soon enough. Second target is the radio station or radio center, whatever you want to call it. I believe that uh, target number two radio station is is um, a complex uh, used to broadcast propaganda. Of course, the enemy, uh, meaning uh, Astor's uh, Astor's henchmen, they want to keep their people in line, so they probably have some kind of broadcasting equipment, antennas, masts, and things like that located at target 2. So that is a very important point. And uh, Force Recon, by the way, that is uh, one of your, your operational targets during your recon. Target number 3 is the town of San Luis. San Luis is the uh, headquarters town of the 14th Motor Infantry Regiment. That's also quite an important target. And then number four, the capital of Malden, which is Latrinit. Latrinit is um, well; it's quite a quite a big town. Almost we could call it a city, but uh, it will be out of your area of operation. So uh, other force recon teams will take care of that for you. But uh, this leaves us with targets uh, number one, two, and three. So the area of operations for the recon op is quite extensive. All right, move on to the next page. Any questions so far? All right, let's continue. Page six, we have the situation report of the current situation. Our carrier battle group called the Aegean Shield has been deployed to the area of operations. And as you can see from the uh, list, our carrier battle group is quite large. We have one carrier, which we're currently on board. We have also the battalion landing team consisting of three marine companies and one force recon platoon. Also have four Abrams tanks, guided missile cruisers, which are USS Bunker Hill and USS Normandy. We also have uh, two anti-surface warfare and an anti um, Submarine warfare uh, littoral combat ships, which are USS Fort Worth and uh, USS Independence. We also have three guided missile destroyers, which are Arlake Lake Burke class destroyers. They're currently stationed around our carrier. They're called the USS Bainbridge, USS uh, Thomas Hutner, and USS. What the fuck was his name? Forrest Sherman, yeah. Then we also have two. SSN Hunter Killer Submarines of the United States Navy, which are the USS uh, Hyman G. Recover and USS Jefferson City. And of course, one combat support ship called the USS Bridge. That's where all our donuts and our Budweiser beer are located at this time. As you can see from the situation chart, our invasion star readiness is at 85% at this time. So there's still a uh, few things to do before we reach the 100% combat readiness and effectiveness. You can see the uh, force recon is uh, still incomplete, that's your job, and the UAV recon is still inc incomplete, that's my job. But the arrival on the area of operations has been completed, combat authorizations from Central Command has been received, and we also have both the UN mandate and the presidential order um, from President Trump. Oh, we're nearly there, but uh, we're still going to need you with your boot on the ground. Question about the situation. All right. It's number seven. Part. Operation order about the enemy forces. Now, these uh, numbers are, they're an estimate. We don't know really how much these guys, uh, how much of these guys there are on the island itself, but uh, we know 
that they have at least 150 men in the Malden Imperial Guard called La Garde in French and um, it's uh, sort of like an elite special forces unit. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Also have the Malden Regular Army with the strength of at least 2,000 men. That means two motorized infantry regiments, a tank, uh, tank battalion, helicopter battalion, fighter squadron, and uh, artillery units, and they have a hell of a lot of, uh, hell of, a lot of vehicles and tanks in the, in the island, so uh, we shouldn't run out of any targets when we get there. And then there's, of course, the modern militia called the Juveniles Diastor in French. These so-called juvies or juveniles are young people, young folk. Males from age 15 to 18 are usually, uh, they volunteer to join the Malden militia, but uh, sometimes they are also drafted and forced to serve in the uh, juveniles. Their strength is about 1,000, but it's probably even more. And once the United States Marine Corps uh, begins the invasion on the island, then they will probably try to muster every man and uh, every every young fella, every every kid, to serve in the in the juveniles. So there there are probably even more than 1,000 men in the militia. All right, let's proceed. Here we have. Uh, Small information packages about these uh, three major factions of the enemy forces. Number one is the Malden Imperial Guard, of which we don't really have an uh, image available because we haven't seen these guys. Uniforms are unknown, but uh, reports, say, reports say that uh, they're consisted they're they're a company strength unit of three platoons, probably even more, but. Uh, we have heard from uh, local sources and CIA intelligence that uh, these guys, uh, each platoon has their own uniform and weapon choices, so they can be uh, every anything uh, between uh, AK-47s to M4s. Hell, they might be even using Marine Corps unit uh, gear and weapons, so we really don't know. I uh, hope actually that the Force Recon and the Navy SEALs, if you find them and if you locate them, then you can tell us more vehicles unknown we have no idea these Imperial Guard members are the elite the so-called special forces of the Malden armed forces these guys our service uh, lasts for the minimum of three years in the Corps and a maximum of uh, eight years in the Corps then these guys go uh, go through it with five so they have they have quite an extensive training and they also have uh, experience of uh, overseas deployments. They have taken part in almost every major war since 1917s uh, in Africa. So these guys, they really know how to fight. They're tough. They're dead loyal to uh, Emperor Astor. Questions about the Imperial Guard? proceeding. Next page. Regulars. Here you can actually see a picture about the regular soldier. These guys are using standard Soviet-made TTSKA uh, camo pattern uniforms with uh, load-bearing vests. Uh, also plate carriers are possible or maybe they only have uh, um, unarmored uh, load-bearing vests so uh, it's, it's possible to encounter both. Not sure if they're using uh, any uh, ballistic protection in their upper up, upper extremities or bodies, so uh, we don't know. But uh, what we do know is that these guys have been equipped with uh, Soviet block weapons, AK-47s, 74s, SVDs, PKMs, RPKs, RPG-7s, etc. Our vehicles are mostly BTRs. Uh, we know that they have been using BDR 60s and 70s, M113 variants, Ural trucks, UAZs, and uh, gas vehicles, but uh, we're not sure which. So if you uh, encounter any modern army units, 
during your recon, then uh, try to take some notes. Try to find out what kind of vehicles they use. That'd be uh, quite important when we start the invasion, to know what, what kind of enemy we have up against. Function, well, you know, they're regulars. So they are serving their mandatory military service. They have a conscription system in Malden, so every man serves, nobody quits, and if someone quits, then they probably kill him and his family. Only if I know, but uh, these guys are the bulk of the armed forces, so their numbers are quite high, at least 1,000 or so. The next page we have the Malden Militia, Juvenile's Diastor. We have these uh, strange Soviet khaki uniforms from the uh, first Afghanistan war uh, with the Soviets. And um, they have, well, they might have some load-bearing vests, uh, but uh, we have only seen these uh, photos of uh, these um, militia soldiers wearing all only the uh, magazine pouches on the right side, as you can see in the picture. Uh, they also have uh, olive green berets and uh, their weapons are mostly cheap copies of Soviet weaponry, so Zastava uh, weapons are possible, Mark 70 and 79, and also AK-47s, of course. Vehicles are mostly w civilian vehicles, but uh, army vehicles are also possible. The function of the unit is uh, youth military organization. Think like uh, Nazi Germany's Hitler Jugend. Uh, these guys are, well, join when, they, when they're 15 years old and, uh, well, they either get home when they're 25 or they die before that, so it's a long service for them too. But uh, we know that their training is uh, not as tough as uh, the one in the Malden, Malden regulars. These are militia. Pretty easy to kill, but uh, if they en masses with their numbers, then we really can't hold them if there's uh, more than 1,000 of these guys. Have any questions about the enemy force? Anything? All right. Then let's go over the recon maneuvering. Now these are operation orders, especially for you guys. Carrier, USS Freedom is the beginning point. The mission begins from here. And the exfiltration, when you exfiltrate uh, from the area of operations, then you will end up here. And hopefully, you have uh, successfully completed the recon mission. Force recon will be airlifted by United States Marine Corps uh, helicopter. Designation call sign is Nevada 1. It's a UH-1 Yankee. It's a Venom helicopter. Uh, there's a close resemblance to uh, the Huey helicopters from the Vietnam War. I think you're familiar, familiar with them. And Force Recon's LZ and Exfil LZ are at the Force Recon team leader's discretion. So, Sergeant, you will be the one who will plan the Infiltration LZ and the Exfiltration LZ after this briefing. The SEALs what? will proceed to the SDV drop zone via a boat. Exfiltration is a reversive action, so you will return the SDV underwater to the uh, drop zone marked with a buoy, and then you will drive the boat back to the carrier. The uh, drop zone has been marked with a buoy and uh, I will I intend to uh, find a picture for you. Yes, it's later in the uh, reconnaissance orders. Also inspect the uh, SATCOM and SIGINT intelligence data and, and try to memorize it if possible. And also inspect the CIA intelligence data for HVD targets and personnel. Let's go around with the uh, CIA intelligence data. So I need you to open the HVT folder. You find it? We have some uh, some key targets and uh, HVTs that you will probably find when you're out there. Uh, these are to uh, help you uh, recognize these targets and uh, identify them correctly. Let's open the uh, 
text, uh, text documents for the HVT descriptions of perception and observation. These are the targets uh, that we have received from uh, Marine Corps Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance Enterprise. Oh, picture number one, Radar Dome. You can open the picture and uh, take a good look at it. These are Chinese-built phased array radars uh, for both low, medium and high altitude target tracking. So these uh, small radars, the enemy uses them probably on the coastline to uh, keep track of uh, possible incoming uh, enemy aircraft, missiles and helicopters, of course. So the um, Marine Corps intelligence suggests that uh, the uh, minimum altitude that these uh, radar domes can track is about 50 meters or so, so helicopter pilots, uh, you should uh, try to stay below 50. All right? And of course these radar domes are designated as high value targets, so if you find any of these, uh, you should probably mark it on the map and uh, try to see if you can either disable it by uh, using uh, explosive satchels or maybe you might uh, want to mark it for a later JDAM strike. But uh, in any case, uh, these are HVTs, so the, these, uh, these radar domes need to be destroyed if we want to make the invasion. Picture number two. This is a coastal gun, caliber 100 millimeter, uh, from the Soviet Union. And uh, formerly these guns have been used by the Finnish Defense Forces Coastal Artillery. These D-10s are, well, they're mostly, uh, as you can see from the picture, they're like uh, T-55 tanks that have been uh, uh, inserted or, or um, uh, placed inside a concrete barrier or concrete uh, base structure. So these are coastal guns and the enemy can use it to uh, destroy our vehicles, our landing crafts and even our ships. So these are designed, uh, these are uh, they, these are not necessarily HVT targets uh, like like the radar dome was, but um, it's uh, it would be quite important to know where these guns are so we can destroy them later. Of course, as, uh, as I said, that they are they are uh, coastal guns, then the probably uh, the enemy has probably uh, assigned these units to the northern coast uh, near the area of operations for the Navy SEALs. So, SEALs, keep your eyes open for these guns. Picture number three. This is a ra radio jammer called the Borisoglebsk uh, Borisoglebsk 1A in this picture. It's a radio frequency jamming device. Uh, the Russian Federation currently uses uh, Borisoglebsk number two, w which is uh, capable of uh, broad spectrum radio frequency, GPS, and GSM network jamming. So, uh, if you find any of these uh, these uh, radio jamming uh, equipment, then you should probably try to destroy it or disable it otherwise, because uh, we know for a fact that the enemy can jam our radio frequencies and our ra radio airwaves with these uh, this equipment. So keep your eyes open for for uh, things like this. These are HVTs. Teams. Picture number four is a picture of uh, Tupolev of 95 Medved or Bear Bear in English. It's a long range tactical uh, bomber and uh, the enemy, we know uh, from the uh, satellite and SATCOM images that they have at least two of these. And we have already pinpointed their location at the airport. Uh, you can see it in the airport uh, um, picture from the SATCOM intelligence. Um, these are not our concern at the moment because the airport is out of limits for us. Uh, it will be um, the reconnaissance of the airport will be handled by another team of force recon so we don't have to worry about this but uh, in case uh, you find these and they have changed their positions from the airport then uh, it, it's uh, it's good if you can uh, if you can pinpoint their location for further investigation if these uh, bombers have been placed uh, outside of their uh, hangars or protection domes then uh, they can probably 
be bombed with JDAMs and uh, laser-guided munitions. One, one thing uh, about the, uh, the bombers, they are capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Uh, currently we don't know whether the Malden army or Emperor Astor himself uh, is in possession of nuclear weapons. We don't know that. We might have a dirty bomb uh, that is not uh, not a fission bomb, but they might also have nuclear bombs, nukes. So they have the means of uh, of um, carrying the nukes, these airplanes, or they might de detonate them on the on the ground. We don't know, but uh, in case these guys have nukes aboard these planes, then we don't want to blow them up. We want to try to contain the explosion with these uh, these aircraft. Be careful. Picture number five is uh, called the Sky Swallow Tianyan. It's a uh, FL-300A, a Chinese-made copy of the uh, RIM-7 Sea Sparrow Point Defense Anti-Air SAM system. These are, well, the same platform is uh, currently in use uh, in the United States Navy aboard this ship, actually. We have uh, two units of these uh, missile platforms and uh, one on the standby. Um, these are designed, uh, designated as HVTs because these SAM sites can uh, track and destroy both our airplanes and our helicopters. So if you find any of these targets, please try to destroy them, sabotage them, or mark their, their exact location for further JDAM strikes. Although recent capability tests have shown that uh, the uh, FL-300A is almost 45% less accurate than its example mo model of uh, RIM-7. So if they fire a missile at us, then uh, we have a 45% chance that it will not hit our air airplane. But I don't want to take chances with these guys. So if you find it, questions about the uh, high-value targets. Just will not destroy them. <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. All right. Then I want you to open the HVT personnel descriptions from uh, CIA. It's the next text document. Can you find it? Presume you found it. Yep, got it. Here we have some uh, HVT personnel in the Mal Malden AO. Picture number one, Minister of Media, Gabriel Claude, born uh, September 13th, 1972. The male, as you can see, or as far as we know, he's not a transgender or anything like that, Caucasian male, and uh, he's the um, the man who's responsible for the uh, distribution of uh, of the propaganda and uh, Emperor Astor's word, so to say! Exclamation mark. This minister is also managing the media and uh, all the outside communication with the outside world, press and um, news agencies and uh, press reports and things like that. Now. We, we really want to catch this guy. This guy is a very high priority, and um, if you find this guy, either during your recon or uh, in the initial invasion, then this guy is to be killed or captured upon first encounter. I'd prefer the, uh, the first option about killing him, because we don't really need this guy to anything, but um, this guy is still like, uh, like a cockroach. He can survive anything. Uh, we have all actually heard reports from the CIA that uh, this guy has been uh, car bombed about th three times by the local resistance, and he has survived every time. So um, he's a sneaky little bastard. And this guy, kill him, or capture him if you want, if you want, of course. But uh, but you can kill him. Questions about the uh, Minister of Media? Fake news is fake news. Yeah, just like the uh, current uh, news from uh, Russia today. <laughs> oh. 
Bishop team. Yeah. Also, another, no, uh, our local sources tell that this guy is under 24 7 security surveillance. So you can see from the photo, he's usually uh, rounded by these, uh, these goons in the black suits with their MP7 submachine guns and uh, load bearing vests. So, um, well, if you find him, then his bodyguards might have also found you. So be careful with him. Fancy cars. Yeah. Get the, one of those cars with my pay grade. No, neither do I. Picture number two, the Colonel. Actually, pictures number two and three. This guy is a uh, sneaky little bastard, too. He's called the Colonel Philip Bergov. Date of birth, July 20th, 1952. He's a male, 181 centimeters tall, Caucasian male. He's the current commander of the 14th Motorized Infantry Regiment. And uh, actually received uh, information from, uh, from Belgium that uh, he's also also uh, wanted for, for uh, wanted to be put on trial for his uh, war crimes in Malden. Um, this guy is uh, he's, uh, allegedly a co-conspirator for multiple war crimes, both in Malden and in the multiple con conflicts of Africa. So uh, he is to be killed or captured upon first encounter. He is, after all, the commander of the, uh, the main enemy force on the northern parts of uh, Malden, so uh, he's a high-value target. As you can see from the designation, he's... Uh, his designation is high priority, uh, but the Minister of Media was uh, very high priority, so it's the highest priority we can give. In pictures four and five, we have uh, Pierce Brosnan, which is of course a fake name because I don't see James Bond here. Uh, people call him the landmine. I don't know his date of birth. birth. Uh, he's probably Caucasian male. Uh, he's an arms and black market dealer, and uh, he has been uh, he has received the HVD, the HVT designation high priority to be captured upon first encounter. We don't want to kill this guy. He's probably of American, born in the United States, American descent, and uh, well, suspected to own a summer cabin in the northern parts of Malden, but uh, we don't know where. So if you find a summer cabin or, or a villa and uh, you can see this guy there, then we want him alive, if you have the chance, of course. Or if you could mark his uh, exact position for the invasion forces, uh, the rest of the BLT, then uh, it would be much appreciated. But uh, like I said, don't kill him. Capture him if possible. But uh, take no risks. Questions? All right, and the last picture is uh, Emperor Aster II from the 1980s. Read more about the emperor in the uh, the other uh, preliminary recognitions package I sent you. Um, but um, if I summarize this character a little bit, like I said, he's the sovereign and the emperor of Malden, their only supreme leader, called Head Honcho. And uh, he served in the United States Army for about 80 years and reached the uh, rank of captain. He uh, took part in the Operation Urgent Fury in uh, Grenada. And uh, he has also seen a lot of action with the United States Army. And uh, he was also part of the uh, initial invasion to Malden and uh, the uh, United States and the British forces uh, installed Emperor Astor, back then he was Captain Astor to be the president of Malden. But uh, short after uh, the NATO forces uh, visited the island, they left the island, then uh, President Astor decided that uh, it's his time to become the emperor. So, well, technically he uh, killed his opponents. He, uh, he actually drowned them if I'm if I'm not uh, misunder if I haven't misunderstood uh, the thing. But uh, he drowned his opponents and uh, then declared himself the sovereign and the emperor. So 
we're dealing with a uh, mass murderer and uh, uh, kingpin criminal. So this guy is the uh, most important target we have on the island. But if possible, we want this guy alive. We don't know his current location. Sure as hell won't be on the northern part, so uh, recon teams, you probably won't <laughs> end up seeing this guy out there in the wild, but uh, he's somewhere on the island, and uh, we will find him. We will bring him to justice, and we will show justice and democracy to the people of Malden, because they deserve that. This guy, this guy deserves a uh, long and happy life in a federal penitentiary in the United States of America and perhaps after uh, 40 or 50 years or so if he is still alive then we can probably shoot him with the execution squad All right. enough about the HVTs let's continue with the uh, the operation orders next page page number 12 United States Marine Corps Force Recon, these are your orders. Number one, insert via uh, the helicopter Nevada 1 to the area of operations. The LZ, as I said before, is uh, at your discretion, First Sergeant. Your insertion direction should be far from the west side of the island because the north side is uh, probably quite heavily heavily fortified with uh, AAA positions and anti-air anti, um, SAM sites, uh, so we don't want you to insert from the north. Uh, that's why the helicopter will travel to the west side, and then you will make your infiltration and insertion from there. LZ should be near the radio station and or the airport, but the radio station is your the, uh, the point of interest that, uh, that I want you to be near. So. First Sergeant, after this briefing, I expect you to uh, plot a course there and um, show me which way you're going to infiltrate the radio station or the outskirts of the radio station and deploy your reconnaissance mission. Orders and task lists for the Force Recon are number one, establish a flexible position for traffic and activity reconnaissance, also called in Finnish Liikenne Laskenta. Targets are radio station, the town of St. Louis and military base west of the airport. We have reasons to believe that the uh, enemy has uh, fortified this military base on the west side of the airport and they even probably have a lot of AAA anti-aircraft and SAM batteries out there. Also um, field artillery units are possible. But we don't know their location so I need your eyes on the field, your boots on the ground and I need you to tell what they have there and where. Numbers, last names, anything you can get. Everything is important. More the better. Commander's intent and the preferable outcome of this mission for the first recon is to find out the enemy strength, the type and position from any of the key targets and return safely without enemy contact back to the USS Freedom. Of course, if you end up in a firefight with the enemy, try to exfil quickly, because that will probably stir some shit up. Enemy are prepared for us out there. And they have patrols in towns and uh, on the streets, but uh, they have no idea that the Force Recon and the Marines and the Navy SEALs are already on the island, so they are not expecting you to be there, but uh, if a firefight occurs, then their reinforcements and QRFs will be there very quickly. Primary objective is to initiate reconnaissance near the radio station, the town of San Luis, and a military base west of airport to determine enemy strength, type, and location. Secondary objective is to sabotage or destroy enemy anti-air, artillery, logistical or command and electronic or warfare targets or mark positions for later JDAM strikes via Air Force. Sergeant, do you have any uh, questions about your orders? Well, sir, they are pretty big. Uh, 
straightforward. Very well. Let's proceed. We seal team four. Your orders are to uh, number one, insert via US Navy boat to the designated SDV drop zone. Number two, insertion direction north at your discretion. This means that uh, you will first, of course, uh, get to the SDV drop zone. Then uh, you will hop out of your boat, target there, lay the anchor, and uh, then proceed to your SDV, uh, which is a submarine, of course. And uh, then after that, you will approach the northern coast uh, from the north, but uh, you can decide where you want to go. So it's up to you uh, which way you want to take it. But uh, the SDV has been dropped to the designated drop zone and uh, it has been marked with a buoy. There's actually a picture about it uh, in the next page. Your current orders and tasks are number one, initiate coastal reconnaissance with the assistance of the SDV and SDV periscope. The periscope has uh, pretty good uh, zoom capabilities in it. I think it was 14.5 times, uh, so uh, it's pretty good also has a night vision capability and multiple thermal spectrums. Number two, your key targets are the Oregon beach and the main beach and of course the northern coastline as a whole. Number three, probable outcome and the commander's intent is uh, for you to find out the enemy strength, type and position from any of the key targets. Return safely without enemy contact if possible and in addition, determine whether either of the two beaches could be designated as the primary invasion bridgehead. This means that your team will have to recon both of the beaches on the sea, under the sea, and on the ground if possible. Of course, I want you to uh, try to avoid any enemy patrols out there, but uh, I need you to find out if either of these two beaches can be used for, for the landing means that uh, the coast should be clear of any obstacles, mines if they have any, and um, any other equipment that the uh, Malden army might have brought there. So it has to be clear of all obstacles before I can call in the, uh, the uh, rest of the marines to start the invasion there with their air cush cushioned uh, landing uh, crafts and uh, Mark 10 boats. The primary objective is to initiate reconnaissance of northern coastline and beaches. Your secondary objective is the same as for the force recon, which is to sabotage or destroy enemy anti-air, artillery, logistical or command and electronic warfare targets or mark positions for later JDAM strikes via the Air Force we have at the bay. Do you have any uh, questions about these? No, sir. Very well. It's 14. Recognitions orders. U.S. Navy SEAL Team 4. Here is the uh, picture of the SDV drop zone. In the picture you can see the uh, orange buoy, which marks the position of the SDV. And actually the SDV is already there. It has been transported there two days ago. So it will be waiting for you at the, dro at the drop site. Intelligence officer will uh, reveal the location after my briefing. Page number 15, other blue for forces in the area of operations. United States Marine Corps Battalion Landing Team Force Reconnaissance Platoon is conducting floor reconnaissance and traffic inspection duties in the island. These are the uh, same kind of uh, mission, uh, same kind of recon activities that are being performed by uh, by the uh, force recon team number one, led by uh, first sergeant here. Uh, the first recon team number one is conducting ghost reconnaissance on the eastern side of the airport. Strike that. Uh, force recon team one, two uh, are are conducting the recon, and uh, Teme, you are number three. Yeah. So as you can see from there. Uh, Force Recon Team 1 is uh, on the eastern side of the airport. They are doing uh, their duty out there, so you can leave the airport to them. Of course, if you can see uh, any interesting targets from your side, uh, that would be the west side of the airport, then you could mark the targets in the map. But uh, the airport is not your concern this time. 
Ghost Recon Team 2 is conducting ghost reconnaissance near the capital city, La Trinite, and Force Recon Teams 4 and 5 are conducting recon on the southern side of the island. But uh, they're out of RAO, so we don't have to worry about them. In any case, if uh, you encounter any Blue 4 units out there, then be advised it's uh, four teams of Force Recon out there, in addition to you, two teams. And uh, they will be they will be doing their job, and you will do yours. But the preferable outcome is that uh, neither of these uh, Force Recon teams will meet each other on the field. I don't want any blue-on-blue -blue incidents this time. These teams try to limit their exposure and contact with the local people, but they also try to limit their exposure and contact with you. So they will be try they will be trying to stay hidden and stealthy uh, while they are conducting their recon. And page 16, other blue four in the uh, blue four forces in the AO. Number one, force commander, that would be me. I will be conducting aerial recon and I can provide both of the ground teams, uh, the Navy SEALs and the Force Recon with uh, visual support. I can see you from my UAV. I will just uh, have to pray, the dear God, that uh, the Malden forces won't notice and recognize my UAV and shoot it down. It uh, would make, uh, well, <laughs> would probably make my attempts to uh, gain rank in the United States Marine Corps impossible. Number two, Agent Shield SSN submarines, uh, the uh, USS Hyman G. Recover and USS Jefferson City will be conducting submerged visual periscope and passive sonar recon on the southern ports. Uh, they're trying to determine if the enemy has any more ships or boats or any other naval crafts on the southern ports that we don't know of. So, number three, uh, USS Freedom has, has assigned uh, um, a Hawkeye AWACS airplanes to uh, conduct some radar surveillance and they will also be monitoring the enemy GSM and radio wave uh, um, frequencies during your mission so we will know what they're talking about if they find uh, anything or hear anything then I will let you guys know right page 17 that's the end of it thank you for attending this briefing if you have any questions now would be the time.